Hi everybody, it's Rebecca Virginia, and in today's video, I'm sharing my favorite fall DIYs from last year. I'll be coming out with new fall DIYs soon, so make sure to stay tuned to the channel. The first DIY in today's video is a wood pumpkin from the Dollar Tree that I transformed using chicken wire. Here's what you need. For this DIY, I'm taking one of the wood standing pumpkin signs at the Dollar Tree. They have fabric and usually some sort of saying on one side, but I just flipped it because I'm only going to be using this back blank side. And I covered it in two coats of white Waverly chalk paint. Then before I put the chicken wire on top of the pumpkin, I just went in with some gray paint. This color is Elephant by Waverly, and I'm just kind of adding in the pumpkin lines. When I put the chicken wire over it, it kind of makes it a little bit harder to tell that it's a pumpkin and not just a circle, so those lines really help. I am using chicken wire that I got at the Dollar Tree in the springtime and it was such a good find so if you see this at your Dollar Tree definitely pick it up and I cut this piece of chicken wire out a little bit larger than the actual wood pumpkin and that's because it's so much easier to just bend the chicken wire over and then you only have to add like one or two bits of hot glue to make sure everything stays in place and I thought that you lost the stem a bit in the pumpkin so I did go in with some brown paint and just painted the stem and now I am just embellishing the pumpkin. These were called silver dollars at the Dollar Tree. And I thought they were really cool floral and kind of looked like a vine. I don't know, it reminded me of pumpkin vine. So I went ahead and hot glued that on. And then I decided to make a green bow. And how I make my bows is really simple. I take two pieces of ribbon and the smaller piece I just make into a circle or a loop and then I cinch it in the center and you can see that is the bow part of the bow. And then to add on the tail, I literally just fold the ribbon in half, kind of squish it down and take a piece of jute and we'll tie that in the back. And now our two pieces are connected and it looks like you made the bow just using one long piece of ribbon, but really it is two separate pieces that are held together with the jute. And then I trimmed the jute in the back and I also trimmed down the bow. I wasn't sure how long I wanted it. So I start off long and then just kept trimming as much as I wanted. And the last step is hot gluing my bow onto the pumpkin. And I love how this came out, especially all of the DIYs in this video, because they are so neutral and light. They're the perfect transition from summer to fall. Next, I'm going to show you how to transform this white and gold pumpkin I got from the Dollar Tree. And I will show you three different ways that you can style this and display it in your home. Here are all of the supplies that you'll need to recreate this fun and festive DIY. I'm starting off by using some fall napkins from the Dollar Tree. They have so many out right now, some are pumpkins, leaves, whichever one that you like best and your Dollar Tree has in stock, you can go ahead and pick up because that is going to be the main item that we're using in this DIY. And what I'm doing is just taking my small precision scissors and fussy cutting around the leaf that I like. And fussy cutting is just, you don't have to be precise, you're generally cutting out the leaf, but if there's little bits of the background napkin in it, that's okay. It's going to be taken away by the Mod Podge. So now I have placed my leaf onto my pumpkin and I'm just covering it with Mod Podge. This will dry clear and this is just to make sure that our leaf stays in place. I'm going with a couple more of the more vibrant leaves. I wanted a bit of color on this white pumpkin and I'm just repeating the process. I put a tiny bit of Mod Podge on the napkin itself and once it's stuck to the pumpkin, I'm going over it with quite a lot of Mod Podge over the top just to seal it into the pumpkin. I placed one more leaf on top of the pumpkin and then to break up a bit of that orange and red color, I took these two green leaves and I Mod Podge that down into the center of our two orange leaves. 
Once I finished this DIY, I really liked it, but I was trying to brainstorm other ways to use it rather than just as a trinket jar. So first I took these velvet pumpkins from the Dollar Tree and made a little pumpkin patch scene and also used some copper fairy lights from the Dollar Tree. Another way that you could display this is either turning it into a candle by melting some wax and putting a wick down in there, or you can do like me and just place a tea light inside. And of course, you can always use it as it's intended, just as a catch-all kind of a trinket jar. I think it'd be really cute displayed in a bathroom, maybe put in some cotton balls. The next DIY is a neutral fall welcome sign. You can place this on your front door or prop it up and display it in your home. Here's what you'll need to recreate it. This year, the Dollar Tree came out with these pumpkin shaped wood blanks, which was so awesome. And maybe they had them last year, but my stores never got them in and it's way better than having to sand the glitter off a pumpkin sign and paint over it. So I was very appreciative that they came out with these blanks. So first I am just painting this completely in white. I use the Waverly chalk paint and then I'm going in with a stippling brush and this gray paint called Elephant, which is also by Waverly. And I'm just going in and kind of drawing in the lines of the pumpkin and shading everything to give it a little bit more definition. And then the worst thing as a YouTuber happened because I forgot to hit record, but all that I did was cover the stem of our pumpkin sign in jute. And then I have one of these galvanized welcome signs from the Dollar Tree. It came in a pack of three with some other sayings and I hot glued that on. Also the Dollar Tree came out with these really pretty white neutral floral picks this year. So I took one and just hot glued that down onto the front part of our pumpkin sign. I just left my sign as is. I plan to prop this up on my mantel and create a pumpkin fall themed scene on there. But if you wanted it to be an actual welcome hanging sign for your door, you could just hot glue some jute to the back of the sign and then hang it on your front door for all to see. For the next DIY in today's video, I'll be flipping one of the pumpkins from the Dollar Tree into this neutral decor piece. Here are all of the supplies you'll need to make it. I took one of the wood pumpkins that the Dollar Tree sells. This one said pumpkin kisses, harvest wishes, or something like that. And I sanded off all of the glitter so that we had a nice smooth surface to paint on. And I took my white Waverly chalk paint and painted both sides of this wood pumpkin. Once the white paint on the pumpkin was good and dry, I went in creating some lines that would be on a normal pumpkin. And also just to distress up this white. So I used my stippling brush and a very dark brown paint it's called Brown Umber from Apple Barrel. And I'm just going in and adding a bit of definition to our pumpkin. Also, I painted this stem brown because I accidentally got some white paint on it. Once that paint was all dry, I moved on to embellishing the stem area of our pumpkin. So first off, I just took some raffia and I doubled it up so it was a little bit thicker. And I tied that and pushed it down to the bottom of the stem. Then I took some of this green floral wire and this is going to be the vines of our pumpkin. So I'm just wrapping it around a pen and then pulling it off and it's all nice and springy like some pumpkin vine. And I just wrapped that around the stem and then kind of just played around with it until I liked the way that the vines were going. I then took some of this buffalo check ribbon and I just tied it in a knot, not a bow. I wanted it a little bit messier looking. And then I again just started playing around with everything, fixing my vines and trimming all my ribbons so they were a little bit shorter. I loved how it turned out just as is, but I wanted to add a small pop of color even in this neutral DIY. So I did add in some green eucalyptus picks. Now we'll be moving into some more kitchen themed fall DIYs and we're going to start off with this pumpkin cutting board. Here are all the supplies you'll need to recreate it.
So I am starting off this DIY by taking the color Pumpkin from Waverly and one of the white cutting boards from the Dollar Tree. And on the lower half, I'm going to be painting our cutting board using this really pretty orange color. And I did end up doing two coats of this orange shade. Because the cutting board is plastic, you really want to wait for the first coat to completely dry before you go in with the second coat. Otherwise, the paint will just start slipping and sliding off of the plastic cutting board. And I'm trying to make the cutting board look like a pumpkin, so this handle part of the cutting board is going to be our pumpkin stem. So I'm going in with a dark brown color and just covering the top part. And here you can really see how difficult it is to paint on the plastic. So I waited for each layer to dry and went in with two layers of that. On the top part of our pumpkin, I'm going to be making a double bow. So I took one piece of this burlap ribbon and cut it a little bit smaller and then a second piece a little bit longer. And I essentially make a circle out of it and then I pinch together the center section and have my bow. When I'm combining them, I'm going to lay them on top of each other and pinch them down. Then kind of fluff up the edges of the bow before tying it together with a piece of jute. And my bow section is done, but I have to make the tails of the bow. So how I do this is actually separate from making the bow part. So I take another longer piece of this burlap ribbon and cut it off. And with some of those tails of the jute still in place, I basically just flatten out this section of burlap ribbon. And this ribbon has a wire in it, so it's a lot easier to work with. You can really shape it. And then once I have my tail nice and flat, how I like it, I am going to add it to the back part of the bow and knot around the jute so that the tail is now attached to our bow. Once the bow was complete, I took a pair of scissors and just trim down the tails and cut it at an angle so it turned into a nice pretty bow. Now is both the fun part and the difficult part because it is figuring out how to style this. So I grabbed some leaves and I thought that I liked the bow at an angle with the leaves poking through. Then I ended up changing my mind and putting the bow actually in the center. I also thought that maybe I would add a pumpkin to the bottom. This is the part where I do not use glue or, you know, put anything down permanently. I am basically just figuring out how I want to style this cutting board. And I decided that I liked the bow in the center best, so I grabbed this section of leaves and I'm hot gluing that to the top of our cutting board and figuring out what leaf position I like best before hot gluing down my burlap bow to the center handle section. I used my cutting machine to cut out this cute good morning pumpkin decal and place that in the center of my cutting board. The Dollar Tree currently has out the cutest selection of fall stickers. I loved this trio of pumpkins and thought it fit with the saying. So I went ahead and just pressed down that sticker in the bottom center of our cutting board. There are about five or six different sticker sheets that I've seen the Dollar Tree put out for fall and they are all so cute so be sure to check out your seasonal section for these stickers because there are lots of different ways that you can use them. The next fall DIY transforms an old glass bottle into an adorable, thankful floral vase. Here are the supplies you'll need to make this. This glass bottle is one that actually held lemonade and I just washed it out and I'm repurposing it for some crafts. All that I did was take one of these sponge brushes from the Dollar Tree and some Waverly white chalk paint and I'm completely covering the bottle and it's kind of starting to look like a milk bottle now but I really like the farmhouse feel that the white color is giving to our small bottle. I've also seen bottles in this shape at the Dollar Tree. Some of them are just for display and you can find it in the glassware section but also the Dollar Tree has iced coffees that are not only delicious, but a really great bottle shape similar to this one. Next, I am taking one of my most used craft supplies, and that is jute or twine. 
and I hot glued the end of it to our bottle, but then after that, you don't really need to add any more hot glue. You can just wrap the jute around and around and it'll stay in place. The only thing that I kind of did is if it got too many gaps in it or too much room, I would just push it towards the top. But I'm going to be covering the entire top section of this bottle in the jute, and then I just hot glued it at the end to secure it in place. Just like I did to the top of the bottle, I am covering the bottom also in jute, but on this one, I'm not gonna be using nearly as much as I did at the top. I'm only gonna go around about four or five times, doing the same thing, just securing the end in hot glue on both where we started and where we're ending. And now it's time to start embellishing our bottle. Like I said earlier, the Dollar Tree has out such cute fall stickers. These are some of my favorites. I think they're so cute. And I ended up using this cheetah or leopard collection again. I really liked this plain pumpkin sticker. So I went ahead and placed that down in the center of the bottle. I also used my cutting machine to cut out the word thankful using some black vinyl. So I went ahead and placed that above the pumpkin as the finishing touch to this jar. I added some florals to embellish this jar, but I also think it would be really cute in the kitchen next to a coffee machine filled with some coffee stirrers or some pretty decorative straws. The next DIY takes our fall kitchen theme quite literally because we are making little mini fall themed rolling pins. Here's what you need to recreate it. This next DIY is going to be using two of these wood rolling pins. I got four in a set for $5 at Hobby Lobby. I'm going to be covering the actual rolling part of our pin, but for the handles, the first one I am painting, it's called Agave by Waverly Chalk Paint. And then the second rolling pin, I am using Territorial Beige from Apple Barrel. And I just showed you these really awesome tear-off palettes that the Crafter Square section came out with. You get 15 of these tear-off palettes for $1, and they work great. You can put paint on them and it doesn't seep through. It almost feels like a wax paper, but I thought it was a really great idea by Dollar Tree. To go over the main rolling section of our rolling pin, I'm going to be using two different types of scrapbooking paper from Hobby Lobby. I always get mine when it's on sale for for a dollar. So this first one has lots of fall words on it, so I thought it was cute and would go with the plain wood handles. And I just used a piece of tape because I know that I'm definitely going to be using these rolling pins again during Christmas time. So you could use hot glue, but I like to make my DIYs easy to kind of take apart so then I can repurpose them for other holidays. So I just attached it with a little bit of clear tape. You'll also notice that I went in and just dry brushed the handles with a dark brown color to make our rolling pins look a little bit more distressed. And with the rolling pin that has that blue agave color in the handles, I'm using this print because it had a blue truck and I thought that matched really well. And again, I'm just attaching everything with a couple pieces of clear tape. To embellish my rolling pins, I'm going to be using jute, and I decided to make a double bow, and for some reason, while I was doing this, I couldn't remember how to make a double bow with only one tail, so I ended up just doing a double bow, and it's going to have double tails. I go back in later, and I cut off those extra tails. I have remembered since, so I'll make sure to show that in another video. I know I've shown it before, but I just forgot when I was doing this. And our second bow I actually made into a triple bow, and that's going to be going on the other rolling pin, and I just cut off the other tails so it looks like I did it the correct way and made a triple looped bow. Then on the ends of our rolling pin, I'm going around three times on the brown colored one, and I'm going around four times on that blue colored one, and I'm just putting this on the far left side of our rolling pin and hot gluing it to the scrapbooking paper. And again, I'm doing the exact same thing on our second rolling pin and then hot gluing the bow right on top of the jute that we just laid down. And as a bit of an extra embellishment and to add a little bit of that orange fall color, I took, I'm not even sure what this is called, some sort of floral pick that was in the fall section of the Dollar Tree 
and I just cut off a couple of little pieces and placed that right in the center of our bows. The next DIY is a fun fall crate that I decorated with some cute fall sayings. Here's everything you need to make this on your own. For our last fall DIY, this is gonna be a pretty easy and quick one. It really just requires a lot of painting. We're going to be taking one of these crates from the Dollar Tree and painting it and adding some cute fall sayings. So first off, I am taking that color that we used earlier, it's called Territorial Beige by Apple Barrel, and I'm painting the sides of our wood crate and also the bottom section of our wood crate. Then for the middle section, I'm going in with white paint. This is my white Waverly chalk paint. And then as our last one, or it'll be the top, we are taking this really pretty orange color, it's called Pumpkin by Waverly, and I'm painting this one. And it looks pretty bright, all of the colors, but I'm now going in with a dry brush and a little bit of this dark brown color from Apple Barrel. And I'm basically just dirtying up the crate. I'm going to be filling it with hay and some pumpkins or some sort of fall embellishment. So I want this to look like it was sitting out at a farm. You can write out your fall sayings with a paint pen or use letter stickers from the Dollar Tree. I ended up using vinyl and I just placed these down on each section of the crate. And I was really loving these Dollar Tree stickers, so I'm using this sheet of stickers again. I liked this white pumpkin, so I just peeled it off and I placed it at the top part of our crate. To decorate this DIY, I filled it with a bale of straw and a bunch of little velvet pumpkins from the Dollar Tree, but I also think this would be really cute filled with utensils or napkins if you're having a fall party or just want to place it in your kitchen. As a thank you for being such amazing viewers and subscribers, I'm going to be holding another calendar giveaway. All that you need to do to enter is comment down below and please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps support my channel. I'm particularly pointing out this Apple image on this new calendar that one lucky winner is going to get because my next video secret, you know, little hint, it's going to be an Apple themed video and we're going to use that image in one of the DIYs. So it'll be really fun if you create the DIY along with me. All that you need to do is comment down below. And last video, I said, tell me your favorite thing about fall, which you're most looking forward to. So in this one, tell me one of your favorite fall memories. Mine has got to be anytime it was September, we would go apple picking at the local orchard in Virginia. It was so much fun. <laughs> I would climb the trees. I don't think you were supposed to and eat the apples. They were so delicious. So that's definitely a favorite memory of mine. Again, one lucky winner is going to win all four of these 2023 calendars. Good luck to all of you, and we'll get back to the fall DIYs. These next few DIYs are all going to be interchangeable ones. What is so great about these is they're not for only one season or one holiday. They're something that you can use over and over again throughout the entire year. And first up is going to be this welcome sign where the O is interchangeable. This piece of long wood I actually got for free because it is a piece of a bed that we were throwing away and I saw this long wood piece and thought it would make a really cute welcome sign for my porch. I've been seeing them a lot in my neighborhood, but I looked online and they can be pretty expensive, so I thought that I would DIY it. I'm going to be making mine in a black buffalo check or a black gingham pattern. It was my first time actually doing a DIY buffalo check. And first what I had to do is prime and just paint the entire board white. That is going to be our base color. Then I'm going in with painter's tape and we are going to begin making our black buffalo check pattern. First, I found center of my wood plank and put down a long piece going lengthwise of a painter's tape. Then as a spacer, I laid down another piece of painter's tape and then I will pull it away. You could measure, um, I believe this was about an inch in between each of them, but instead of measuring, it was a lot easier to just lay down a piece, another piece of painter's tape as that spacer. And again, these are all going lengthwise. This is our first step. 
And once these are all laid down, I am going in with a dark gray paint. This is called Elephant by Waverly Chalk Paint. And I am covering everything and I'm kind of dabbing and then dragging just because I don't want any of this to bleed through our painter's tape. So I'm just being careful about not adding too much. Then I did not wait for this to dry. I immediately peeled back the painter's tape when I was searching on Pinterest and Google of how to do the best foolproof, no bleedage or leaking of the buffalo check pattern. It said to remove the first layer quickly, not when it dried, and I don't know, I thought this came out really well, so I would also suggest following that rule. Now we're doing the exact same thing except the other way and this way took a lot longer because as you'll see you need way more pieces. So first off I found center of our sign and laid down the painter's tape. Then I'm using the painter's tape spacer method again laying down a piece tacked as a spacer. Laying down another piece that will be more permanent and then peeling that spacer out between the two permanent pieces and just repeating this process again and again. This one took a little bit of time, but it's really satisfying to start to see how the buffalo check is appearing. And I am now using that same dark gray color elephant by Waverly, but this time we're painting it the other way. So I'm dabbing and then doing a little bit of dragging with the paint, but again, I'm doing more of the dabbing technique just because I really don't want any of that paint to bleed through. And then once I've dabbed, it's okay to start dragging. I just didn't want to load up my brush and completely put on a ton of paint because I was really scared that at the end of this, when I peeled off the tape, it would just be a blobby mess. Once that is completely dry, and I really do mean completely dry because if you apply the tape when it's still a little bit wet, it is going to peel off your design. We are going to be going back in the first way with the tape going a long ways, but you can kind of see where the white pieces are. So we're going to be going over that section, covering up the white pieces in our sign. And once we have covered that up, you can not so much see it on camera, but you can see it in real life where the blue painter's tape was that we applied before and now where the blue painter's tape is. If you noticed, I did not peel off that second layer of blue painter's tape. You are leaving that on. Then I took a sponge brush and went in with black paint, just dabbing. I didn't do any dragging with this one. I was way too scared using the black paint that I was going to have everything bleed through. Then once it was completely dry, it is time to start peeling off the tape and this is so satisfying and so cool to see because it is just really great because you don't really know how everything is turning out or how everything is looking as you're making it. So when you peel off the tape, it's just very rewarding and as you can see, my puppy who I got a couple of months ago was very interested in my project. He was running around stealing the tape. You'll also see in some clips after this, he really just wanted to help me make this craft, but I think he was actually just more interested in eating the tape. <laughs> then it started to thunderstorm really bad, so I had to move this project inside, which as you can see, my puppy just wanted to help me again. So don't worry, I moved my tabletop soon, but I started off on the floor just because this is such a massive sign that it didn't really fit on my desktop that I'm usually working on and it especially wasn't working with my puppy stealing my letters. My letters were made from a vinyl using my cutting machine, but there are lots of different things that you can do if you don't have a cutting machine. The Dollar Tree sells large poster board letters in their school section, and those would work really well on this sign. You could also just print out the letters and then create your own stencil that you could fill in with paint. You could freehand this. You could just print out letters and Mod Podge them down onto the sign. So there are a lot of different options. I ended up going with vinyl, but you can really choose anything. You don't need a cutting machine for this. Like I said earlier, the O in my sign is what is going to be interchangeable with the seasons. I think the buffalo check looks gorgeous in the summer with a sunflower. I chose this pumpkin wood ornament for the Dollar Tree to be my O during the fall. I'm going to change it up for Halloween and then I'm going to make some sort of small wreath to be the O for Christmas. I have so many ideas for what I want to make moving forward. 
One thing that I could use everyone's help on though is how to apply this. Originally, I was just going to do a Velcro sticker and apply it so that I could Velcro on and off different objects to be the O, but I realized that when I make my wreath for the Christmas time, I don't want there to be a Velcro piece in the center of my wreath since the wreath will be cut out. So for now, I am just placing this on using some backing tape, and so far it has worked really well. My porch is covered, so that might be helpful, but I'd love to know what you guys think I should do. The next DIY is a super quick interchangeable crate. I took one of the crates from the Dollar Tree and painted it using brown, white, and blue paint. And then I took these pumpkins, also from the Dollar Tree. I left two as is and painted two using the same blue color as the crate. This was Agave by Waverly. So what is going to be the interchangeable part is this little sign here that says pumpkins, a dollar a pound, and what actually goes inside the crate. So the sign you can change out with the seasons as well as the items that you place inside the crate. I already have an idea to do snowflakes or snowballs for Christmas. I think the blue will go really well with that. And I also think it's a great spring blue color that I will be able to put flowers or maybe some bunnies in for Easter. And I am making a hanger for this sign just using a small piece of jute and two pieces of tape. The sign was so easy to make, I didn't even show it. All that I did was cut out a piece of white paper, distress it a bit with brown paint, and then I just wrote out pumpkins on it. Now to hold up our sign, I am taking a thumbtack. You could also take a nail if you had a larger crate or if you had a short nail. And that is going to be what makes this crate interchangeable. So with the seasons or holidays, you can change out the sign, change out what you put inside the crate, and it will be a brand new DIY. Now to fill up our crate, I am stuffing it with two pieces of tissue paper. You could also use a plastic bag, or if you wanted to be really festive for fall, you could add in some of the straw that the Dollar Tree sells but that tends to get everywhere. So I just placed in two pieces of white tissue paper and then I started stacking my pumpkins, seeing how I wanted them to be arranged. And when this is going to be displayed, I plan to put it on my mantle. So no one's going to be looking at it like you are right now, which is top down. They will only see the front side. So really this tissue paper is going to be invisible. Let me know in the comments down below what seasonal or holiday items you would put in your crate. This next DIY is an interchangeable sign that I made last year during the fall and I have now used for Christmas and for 4th of July and Memorial Day. It's one of my favorite DIYs that I have ever done. And I actually used one of the Halloween signs that the Dollar Tree brought back out again this year to make this. So this is one of the long beware signs and I'm going to be covering it in white chalk paint. And this had a lot of black glitter on it, so I did sand that off first, and then I covered it in about two coats of this white paint. The Dollar Tree has a bunch of wood ornaments out that are great for fall. I went with the ghosts because I'll be using this sign for Halloween, and I'm just covering them in that same white paint, and then distressing the edges in a dark brown paint. The key to this DIY are these galvanized frames. I found them during the springtime, but the Dollar Tree always brings these back out, so if you can't find them right now, just keep your eye out. I have been looking for them and they will randomly appear. I made a sign like this for my mom too, and we couldn't find it for a couple of months, and then boom, they had boxes and boxes of these frames. I am taking off the frame part on the back, and that is because we're going to be hot gluing these to the sign that we painted and the back part of the picture frame just kind of got in the way. So I just pulled that off before hot gluing these frames down onto my board. I would also recommend adding a few drops of E6000 glue or some sort of more stronghold glue. One of my frames did fall off once. I think the hot glue works fine, but just to make sure that everything's nice and secure, I would add a bit of that E6000. And another part of this DIY that makes it interchangeable are not only the wood ornaments that I am hanging off the frames, but also the bow. For each holiday or season that I decorated this DIY for, I also made an interchangeable bow to go with it. 
So for this Halloween ghost one, I have orange and a black ribbon and I added on some of these glittery black chenilles. And how I am making the bow interchangeable is by adding these Velcro stick-ons. I did use a little bit of hot glue just to make sure that it stayed in place. The stickiness was pretty good, but I didn't want it to be falling off, so I figured I'll be safe and just add a bit of hot glue. So I'm placing that on the back of the bow as well as on the top of the board. And now the little bow that is going on top can easily be removed and replaced to go with every season and holiday. Let me know in the comments down below what season or holiday that you would use this DIY for. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep searching, keep creating.